Overcome 2021 part 6. Overcoming anxiety. Oh boy. Amen. Anxiety. Y'all know what that is. It's that feeling you get when you either in trouble, you thinking about some trouble, you thinking about something, and it's got your heart beating funny, and you get that feeling right here. You can't sleep. You get them racing thoughts. You overthinking. Your mind taking you somewhere that it shouldn't take you. Amen. Before you thought about that, you were fine. Think about it. Before you went down that path of thoughts, you were fine. But then that path of thoughts, down that path, caused anxiety. And after you get off that path, you're going to be fine. Yeah, so anxiety has to be a spirit. Has to be a spirit that comes for you. Amen? And of course it's not from God. God don't make you feel like that. Amen? God don't make you feel like that. It's not from God. So let's talk about this. This is going to bless you today. The definition of anxiety. A feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. Typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. That's a pretty good definition, huh? Worry, nervousness, or unease. Anxiety makes me uneasy. Typically about something you can't control. Yeah, because if you can control it, you wouldn't have it. Yeah, so when the, whenever it's out of your control, it overwhelms you with a feeling. And that feeling is uneasy, nervous, or worry. And you can't change it. Anxiety usually means you can't change it. If you could change it, you wouldn't have anxiety. So it's a trick of the mind. And if it's a trick, you know it's the devil. He's the trickster. Amen? Make you feel like things are worse than they are in your head. Yeah. Or they're going to be worse than they're going to be in your head. I teach the men all the time. Oh, in heroes. What I tell y'all? Get out your head. Get out of your head. Because there's foolishness in there. Yes, it is. That's food. You can't manage your thoughts in your own head. Yeah, because you crazy. The flesh is too much going on because you don't too much has happened. Amen. Too much happened in your life. You've seen too much. You've done too much. You got to stay out of your head because that's where all of it is. Amen. Talk to somebody. Get some help. But don't try to fix it in your head. That'll lead you down a pathway of thoughts. Oh, and you mess up. Yeah. Amen. So it's a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease. Typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. So we know we're at the end of the world. We know they're trying to kill folks in this world. All the stuff we've been talking about, about the elite, population control, depopulate, all of that stuff we've been talking about is here. Won't be able to buy, sell, work a job, all that stuff without getting, that's here. Ain't not stamping 666 on your hand and on your forehead. I told you they weren't going to do that anyway. It was just going to be a way that they would get control over people by taking away some of the basic necessities that a person wants in exchange for their cooperation. Amen. That's what grandmama told you was going to happen. Of course, they pictured it as you being in line at the grocery store and you have to show some kind of number on your wrist or on your forehead. Well, you might have to show some kind of ID that proves you were vaccinated. Look at somebody and say, but I'm not about to have anxiety about it because you can't control it. Can you control that? No. Go on your job. Yo, this vaccine is a... 
you're fired. You did it before the, before the identification was required. You, you could have bought some time. That's what I'm doing. I'm just buying some time. Oh, but I'm preaching loud, so eventually they're going to shut something off online. I don't know what they're going to do, but I'm just going to preach the gospel until, amen. I'm going to be in here preaching until they drag me out of here. Watch. I'm going to be in here. I, hey, hey, I have orders. Until God tell me to stop, I'm not stopping. Amen. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say. They could try to ruin my name, ruin my reputation. No lie. They could try to do whatever they want to do. I know what God told me to do. And that's the one I'm going to obey. Amen. And obviously, y'all want to hear it too. I want, look at somebody say, I want to hear the truth. Amen. So we'll just keep riding. I mean, you know, you can't get mad when they take you offline and shut you down and all that kind of stuff because that's their stuff. I mean, Bill Gates is real bold right now because, I mean, his software is how you see it. Yeah, yeah these dudes have set it up. The big tech, I mean, they're the ones pushing the vaccine, the allegiance, they, I mean, they, the, the, the depopular, everything. And then you got to use their phones, their software, everything. They got it on lock. So you can't get mad if they block my Twitter. Oh, we going to protest. I can't protest. That's theirs. But freedom of our, ain't no freedom. That's theirs. That's theirs. Because I want the same freedom when a freak walk through the door and I tell them you can't be in it. I want the same freedom. Because this is ours. Y'all, see, you didn't, you didn't look at it like that, right? You want to hear me? You come to, come to North Richardson Hills. They shut everything down. I'm going to be in here preaching. Hey, Amen. I ain't no internet preacher. I preach in here. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. And so, don't you get all bothered by that. So, I don't worry about it. I don't get uneasy when I'm uploading. Ooh, if I put that up, they go, <laughs> So, do what you're going to do. Sometimes you just have to tell the devil to do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. Oh, but brother, if you keep doing it, do what you're going to do. That's what I tell the devil. You know who I got that from? Jesus. When Judas walked up to him, he said, Judas, do what you're going to do. I know you went and lied on me. I know you went and said this, said that. Don't do what you're going to do, bro. Amen. During these uncertain times and trying times, anxiety is at an all-time high in the lives of people everywhere. Being anxious about what's happening, what's going to happen, and what to do about it will cause unrest in a person. It's hard to sleep when you're worried about what's going to happen. They tell you on your job, oh, if you don't take this vaccine, we're going to fire you, which they can't. They can't even tell you that. But you go home ooh, ooh, feeling some kind of way. You up that night. Don't you hate when you lose sleep over something that you can't change no way? Man, that makes me mad at myself. Go to sleep. Big head. I talk to my head. You big old head. Find sleep in there. Find some sleep in there somewhere. Head too big. To not be carrying sleep. <laughs> so I won't. I, I just. I hate when I miss a night's sleep over something I can't change. You wake up the next day mad, cause you know when you miss sleep, you just don't feel good. Groggy all day. Oh. Yeah, get that little haze in you. Don't you hate the haze in the eyes? Where'd that come from? That's because your eyes didn't get to wash. That's one of the processes that it does overnight in REM sleep. There's 200 processes. One of them is for your eye. That's why sometimes you wake up and you got crust in your eye. You ain't ate no crust. Now, what did I eat crust with crust on it? You didn't have to. That's your eyes. Your eyes wash themselves at night. Cleans, it cleans itself at night in REM sleep. If you don't go into deep sleep, it's not going to happen. 
So you wake up, or you, if you stay up, if anybody crazy enough, I've done it before, to stay up 24 hours, yeah. your body know you supposed to have gone to sleep. So you had a, ooh, it's like a film. The whole world looks different. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And then you get that thing in your chest, and you're like, what's that feeling right here? That's because your body didn't complete its processes. Yeah. So you going off yesterday's sales. Yeah. Cell apoptosis, where old cells die, new cells are reborn, that happens in REM sleep. So if you don't do it, you're going to have that little lump. But here's the worst part about not getting REM sleep. This is why you have to have it. You're crazy. Amen. You're just crazy. If I miss a night's sleep, I'm not talking to nobody the next day. Because I'm going to say stuff that I'm going to regret. You have no filter. Your filter has to be remade overnight. Yeah, you just talk out of your head and crazy. You do crazy stuff and make crazy decisions. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You want to hide yourself. You hear it coming out, but you can't stop it. Then after you said it, man, what? You be one odd. How? You can't take it back. That's why you look at somebody and say, you need sleep. R-E-M sleep. Not just regular sleep. R-E-M. Not chemical induced sleep either. You know your body knows when you put yourself to sleep. So when you take some kind of Tylenol PM, NyQuil. You know, if you take NyQuil to sleep, you a drunk. That ain't nothing but bourbon. You getting drunk. You might as well just get the whiskey. Same thing. You know it when you taste it too. Oh. If it wasn't for the mint, it would be rum. Drinking. Don't even use the measurement thing. I don't need that. <laughs> this tastes like mad dog. I don't, I don't know why they put this little measuring cup in there. <laughs> yeah, but you taking substances to go to sleep, your body knows you did that. So it's not going to recognize that as REM. It's not. And that's why when you take something to sleep and wake up the next day, why do I feel like I didn't sleep? Because technically you didn't. Can I preach in here? Man, I'm on the first bullet. I know the Super Bowl is today, but you need to hear this. Amen. 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 Being anxious. I get this is what I this is what everyone talks about. Ain't you? It's like, you know, folks get divorced because they ain't been sleeping right. Yeah, you go a long period without sleep, you don't even like the person you're living with. Yeah, without sleep, I mean it changes everything. Jesus knew he had to deal with a demon. Jesus went to sleep on a boat that looked like it was going to sink. Jesus like, I don't care how raggedy this boat is and how rough this, I'm going to sleep. Because I got to deal with legion when I get over here. I got to deal with a dude with a demon. So I need some rest. So Jesus down there sleeping, the ship just getting thrown in the air, coming back down. Folk in there, wait a minute, Lord. Now, I know you the Lord and Savior of everything. But my goodness, you can't make this ride a little smoother? Come on, Jesus. I mean, don't the winds and the waves recognize you? Why are you sleeping? Can you calm this down? But there was it was a test for them. Jesus woke up like, why are you worried about this boat? I'm on here. This boat's not going to sink. I, are you alive? I'm on here. Yeah, it may get rocky. Yeah, it may shake. Your life might get rocky. Things may look bad. But look at somebody and say, Jesus is with me. If he's with you, what are you worried about? You don't worry? That was all, the only reason he let that boat shake is he cause, because he knew your life would get shaky. He's the same man that stood out there and said, peace be still. And everything settled down. That was already on the boat. But he allowed the boat to get rocky to show you that when your life is rocky, just say, peace, be still. Yeah. Luke 21 and 26. 
Men's hearts failing them in this time for fear and for looking at those things which are coming on the earth. So it's making people feel a certain way. Right now, they're getting anxiety and their hearts are failing them because they're afraid of what's coming. Because it's coming. The end is, look at somebody say the end is here. It's not near, it's here. America was like the last Mohican in the plan of world domination. We were the ones out of control and nobody could control us and we were independent in our thinking. We didn't have to obey the orders of the UN and all of the world councils. We were independent. We were rogue America. Now we're conforming. The devil loves to make us feel uneasy about what's going on. And he usually uses our past failures to conjure up thoughts that we will fail again. Mm! And not be able to make it through what we're facing. So he loves to make us uneasy about what's going on. And he's going to use your past failure to make you feel you're going to fail again. That's, look at somebody say, that's nothing but the devil. You go around somebody, they bring up your past failure. It's nothing but the devil. It's nothing but the devil. And it's brought up to remind you that you did fail. So that means you might fail again. So the devil wants you to feel like you have no security in the salvation you claim. 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a what? Roaring lion, walking about, doing what? Seeking whom he may devour. So he's looking for you. He's looking for doubt, question, fear, so he could get in and bring up, oh, oh, he's going to bring up your old bad reputation. You had. Oh, in high school, you was a booger bear. <laughs> Your picture in the yearbook is just blank. So we ain't even putting him in there. Vampire. You can't take a picture of a vampire. In school, you was a vampire. Just blank. Got your name and everything, but just blank. Yeah, the devil's reminding you of those years. Man, that was a long time ago. You ain't nothing like that now. But he'll remind you. Oh, remember. Anxiety can come from many different sources. But the bottom line is that anxiety is worry. And as a believer, and as believers, we have to stop worrying about things that we cannot control or things that we fail to handle properly. So if you fail to handle things properly, you got to stop worrying about it. Get past it. There's something I failed to handle properly that was in the past. I've dealt with it. I got to get past it. You thinking about it again is not going to change it. Proverbs 12 and 25. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down. But a good word makes him glad. Did you hear that? So anxiety in your heart will do what? It'll weigh you down. We all have sinned and fallen short. Anybody sinned and fallen short? Who in here has never sinned and never fell short? Ever. Put your lying hand down. You just sinned then. We all have sinned and fallen short. Depending on who we are and what people think of us, that fall can be great and disheartening. Amen. So it could be bad to somebody else, but if it's your husband and your wife, that was a big fall to them. It could mean something different. But the beauty of being in Christ is that we can be what? Made new and then move past the failure and the opinions of those that judge us. Amen. John 8 and 7. So when they continued asking him, what you going to do about this woman? We caught her in the act of adultery. 
She buck naked right now. When I'm drug her out. Nobody asked where the dude was. He in there putting his suit back on. She out just, you done just drug her naked out in the street. We caught her in adultery. What you gonna do, Jesus? Jesus looking at him like, man, I'm about to outsmart all of y'all. I'm about to speak a living word. And the reason it's living is because it's still alive today. Jesus just seized opportunities. He's looking. Hmm. Who I want to be like? Don't you want to be like him? Why wouldn't you want to be like that? You got these folk that drug the woman out naked. They tell her she's an adulterer. We caught her in the act, blah, blah, blah. And Jesus is, the Bible says he just got down on the ground and started writing in the sand. Thinking, oh, I'm about to get him. He lifted up himself and looked at him and said, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone. The Bible said they all just start dropping their rocks. <clears throat> yes, I can't hit her. Yes, I can't throw it. Because I have sin myself. Most anxiety is worry about what the future holds for a person. Our perception of the future is usually based on what our past was like, right? This creates a cycle or loop that keeps a person bound to nervousness or uneasiness because the past was bad and the future could be the same. Did y'all understand that? So a lot of people's anxiety is based on the past being bad. And because their past was bad, they're nervous and uneasy and unsure. A lot of times the spirit of sabotage will come into a person's life and they'll sabotage their future just because their past was bad. They can't. It's too good to be true. Boy, I can't tell you how many men and women, wives and husbands have told me, man, things are just going so good, but I just feel like something is wrong. What's wrong? I don't know, but you're about to sabotage it. You're so used to, to drama that when God removed all the drama, you want it back. Don't feel right. What doesn't feel right? Things going good. Y'all are laughing and I'm not laughing. The spirit of sabotage. You're just used to something being wrong all the time. Husband just... Bring you flowers. <laughs> What's these for? I, I, mean, I just I thought about you today and I love you. <laughs> what? What these for? What you about to tell me? I'm not about to tell you anything. I just sent you the flowers because I love you. <laughs> Wait. Oh. <clears throat> so as he leave, mama, guess what he did? He brought me some flowers. Ooh, girl. Whatever your daddy would do that. It, it, this and this and this. Then I get an email. Pastor, I'm, I'm, my, we on the verge of divorce. What was going on? My husband is doing something. And I'm praying for God to show me what he's doing. Well, how you know he's doing something? Because he, he, he brought me flowers. Y'all, I ain't laughing. This, this, this stuff really happens. And I'm like, you're just not used to things going good. So you start looking for it. And once you start looking for it, you're going to find it. Even if you fabricate it, you're going to find it. Yeah. Looking through his phone. Who, who is this? Uh, my boss. What's she texting you for? Uh, to come to work. Why she got to text you? Well, when I, she sent me emails, you got mad. Because she had a smiley face on the email. At the end of the email, you got mad. So I told her to text. That phones are too private. You should, don't have, ugh. I don't like her. But just looking for something. And it's her. It's inside of her because she saw so much. So much trauma happened to her. 
Really, so much trauma happened that it's just hard for her to accept the fact that things are going good. They can pray for it. It can happen. And it's still it's too unbelievable. I know I'm preaching. Yeah. This creates a cycle or loop that keeps a person bound to nervousness or uneasiness because the past was bad and the future could be the same. Matthew 6 and 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall do what? God is going to give you thoughts about tomorrow, tomorrow. You don't think about tomorrow today. That's what he just said. Why are you worried about tomorrow today? Oh, but God, this bill is coming up. Ooh, and the first of the month come. It just round the 22nd and the 23rd. Oh, my heart. I just get this thing. Like, well, 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 we can fix that. Let go of some stuff. That mean you, you, it means you overextend it. If by the 23rd you got a lump in your chest about what's going to be required of you on the first, you shouldn't have got that stuff. I mean, but it's my house. Then you should have got a smaller one. Amen. If you can't afford it, don't get it. Then get anxiety. Oh, church, y'all pray. Y'all pray for me. Just pray. Won't you quit doing stupid stuff? Why did you buy that car? Oh, because the people, just, ain't nobody looking at cars out in the parking lot. Let's see what he's going to get in. Ain't nobody out there doing that, man. We talking about other stuff. We arguing with Jeff and Delvin out there. Ain't nobody talking about no cars. <laughs> really? We're just fellowshipping. Nobody measuring you by what you drive. You went and bought that car. Now you can't afford it. You should have kept that cut list. Was it running? It was running. It was running. It still had to bounce in it when you was a teenager. But just don't hit the switches. Don't hit the switches. Just let the back drag. <laughs> you swear you can sell that switch motor and pay another bill. <laughs> I don't know why people do that. Let God upgrade you, man. Wait on God, and when it's God, you don't have to worry about it. His blessings what? And it's what? No sorrow. Take no thought for tomorrow. Why you look at somebody and say, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to worry about itself. You'll get a chance tomorrow if you make it to tomorrow. But today, don't worry about tomorrow. The problem with this cycle is that it eliminates an important element from God's plan. That element is faith. The whole purpose of faith is to make us see and believe the unseen. Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Not seen. That's what faith is. Anxiety is the enemy of faith. This is why when you're anxious, you must pray for faith. So whenever anxiety comes, faith prayer. Amen. Yeah, whenever you get that feeling, you got to pray. God, give me faith. Give me faith. When the man's son was going crazy and casting himself in the fire and all that, he had doubt. So he, he said, Lord, I took him to your disciples. Nobody could help him. He said, but I know you can help him. Now help my unbelief. Help my faith in this moment. I know you can do it, but maybe my faith won't allow it. So help my unbelief. So when anxiety comes, you pray for faith. Trusting and believing that God will work it out for you is a benefit of serving and believing in him. Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live how? By faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Faith gives us an opportunity to move past our past. No matter how bad the devil makes it look to us, faith says I'm different. See, it takes faith to know that a change really took place. Yeah. Amen. I don't care what they're saying about me. It takes faith to know who you are. 
no matter how bad the devil makes it look to us, faith says, I'm different. And because I'm different, the future will be what? Different. different. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold what? All how much is all? all? So you're different. Look at somebody and say, I'm different now. No matter what the devil says. Amen. Oh, he does this too, just talking. My goodness, he'll shrink as small as he need to be to get to that ear. Being nervous and having anxiety symptoms can be resolved by quieting all negative voices and bad memories from your past. So that's some stuff you're going to have to block. Some people you're going to have to ban. Some folks that you just got to get away from. Some conversations you can't be a part of. Some pages you can't visit. Some websites you can't go to. Some buildings you can't drive up to. Some stores you can't go back to. Some reunions you can't go back. I, you coming to the reunion? I, I can't be there. Being nervous. It can, some of it can be resolved by quieting negative voices and memories. Because you have been made new, old things must be what? They must pass away. You must not allow the enemy to keep reminding you of who you once were and plant seeds of hopelessness because of your past transgressions. Amen. I keep all the letters from all my old boyfriends. Why? That's witchcraft. Hey, boy, it got quiet. Somebody keep it. I'm just a keeper. I'm just a whore. You better throw that stuff away. That stuff has voices and spirits behind it. Shoebox just talking. The, the cover and read me. He come in here. As soon as you get lonely, you see it in the box just jumping. I said like Jumanji. You just hear some drums. That's, where them drums coming from? Go in the closet. Box just... Bloop, bloop. Throw that away. Amen. Amen. That's not who you are anymore. Amen. Must, and you can't allow the enemy to keep reminding you of who you once were and plant seeds of hopelessness because of your past transgressions. Amen. Get, look, somebody say, get delivered. The devil is the devil. Y'all know that, right? So he will always make you feel inadequate and incapable of fixing things and moving forward with a good future. This is why we serve a God that is above the devil. So no matter what thoughts he brings or what bad things come your way, God is what? The final judge. And if God's son sets you free, guess what you are? You are free. John 8, 36. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be what? Free, free in D, summary. Long summary today. It's about to be a long summary. But it has some prayers in it that I want to give to you guys and all the people that have asked me about anxiety and sent me things or whatever. These are the prayers that I use. These are the methods that I use to deal with anxiety when I have it. I had it the other day. I was just walking around just depressed because they send that witchcraft. So whenever somebody does something like put the post on the little monster lady, lady guy guy, all the witches gonna send witchcraft to me. So I feel it when it comes and sometimes it just hits me. We were dealing with, you know, sickness and different things in our family and different things so that, you know, the devil knows, okay, yeah, he's, he's a little, I, I can find a crease. And the devil will just come in and I'm just walking around and my wife looking at me, she's like, are you okay? And I was like, man, I just, you just start feeling it. It's just the witchcraft just starts coming. Because, I mean, like I, like I was telling the leaders today in the leadership meeting, you know, I don't get pastoral attacks like a normal pastor would. Like a normal pastor has a congregation, and then when the devil comes, whatever, he's just going to use that congregation, whatever. But I have an international ministry that's in, on all the continents. And so the attacks that come to me are going to be super attacks. Y'all understand that? It's just going to be magnified because of what I've done for all these years, and what I cover in these messages. I cover witchcraft, I cover sorcery, I cover all of these things, I go against these things. Because of what I'm dealing with, the attacks get tough, so this week I was just like, Lord, Lord, Lord. And that's when I knew the Holy Spirit said, no, nope, not only are you gonna have to 
deal with this that's happening to you, but I want you to deal with it with everyone so that everyone can get whatever, the method you're about to use, everyone needs to use the method. Does that make sense? So I, this is my method, and it works. All of this works. Anxiety is a spirit. It's the same demon as worry and depression. They are all intertwined together to bring you low in your mind, in your own mind. Here are some steps to take to fight off these spirits when they come. So depression, worry, anxiety, same spirit. Y'all still with me? Don't take pills for this because there are no pills for this. Okay? There is no medication for this. You can't give nobody a pill for anxiety. You're trying to give somebody a physical pill for a physical feeling when the feeling isn't physical. Can't happen. Get off the medication. Don't take it. Not anxiety medication. First thing, tell yourself you are forgiven. Look at somebody and say, tell yourself you're forgiven. You got to tell yourself you're forgiven. Sometimes you have to remind yourself. Because some other folks may think you're not. Tell yourself you're forgiven. If your anxiety is coming from past error or sins, recognize that God has what? Forgiven you and you are not guilty of it anymore. This should be your prayer. Father, I take authority over every thought and haunting memory of who I was before I accepted you. And even every error I have made since I received you, I claim my newness my new creation status, and my victory over those sins. They will not affect who I am becoming in you, and the enemy cannot keep bringing them up to me. I cast down every negative word spoken about it to me and every person that speaks of it against me. In Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity what? Every thought to the obedience, making your thoughts obey. That'll get you past anxiety. Number two, give it to God. Look, somebody say, give it to God. Man, if you could handle it, you wouldn't have the lump in your chest. Give it to God. You cannot worry about things that you have no control over. Whether it's the end times, vaccine, COVID, job security, etc. If it's above what you can control, then you must give it to the one that controls everything. God is our rock and our salvation. So who should we be afraid of? If we are true believers, we must stand on his promises and keep our eyes off man's plans. God is in control and we must trust him and not worry about him doing his job. Amen. Amen. This is your prayer. God, you are a good father and you have done so much for me. Please say that first. He deserves to hear that. <laughs> this what you're dealing with don't cancel out any of the goodness you've experienced. God, you are a good father. You've done so much for me. I cannot and will not worry if my confidence is in you. Help my unbelief and my anxiousness about the future. Help me, Lord, to depend on you for the things I cannot change or control. God, our world is travailing, and we are in this world that belongs to you, so we need you to handle the things we cannot. Take away my fear, anxiety, and worry. Fill me with your spirit so I can have the fruits of it. I am in you, Lord, and you are in me, so I will not worry or feel anxious about what you are in control of. Matthew, in Jesus' name, Matthew 6 and 27. And which of you, by being anxious, by having anxiety, can add a single hour to his span of life? He's telling you your anxiety can't change anything. Number three, call it what it is. Uh-oh. Look at somebody say, call it what it is. Oh, no matter how ugly it is, you got to call it what it is. You got to be honest with God. You cannot hide sin or regret. You cannot hide shame or self-pity. 
The devil knows how you feel because he is the one giving you all these grievous feelings. So you can't walk around pretending they are not there and trying to be a light to others. Yeah, I tell folks all the time, oh, I'm about to start my YouTube ministry. And boy, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, huh? Will you deal with your, the ministry of yourself first? Amen. Before you go draw all that attention. Well, it's just a little post. I just want to put some. Don't you understand that that's the worldwide web? So there's worldwide demons there. I don't think you're ready for that. Amen. Deal with yourself first. Amen. The devil knows. He know how you feel about yourself, and he know a lot of times you posting it to see what people are gonna say, so you can judge yourself. Yeah. You can't walk around pretending that they are not there and trying to be a light to others. I will preach in here. Yeah, how are you looking at me? You must address these feelings immediately and be free from them. So the enemy will not manipulate you by your own negative self-image. You must see yourself the way God sees you or you will be taken down every time you try to be uplifted. Expose the issue to God and speak it out loud. Uh-oh. Look in the mirror. And admit how you really feel about yourself. Hmm. Look in the mirror. And admit. Woo. Yeah, it's easy for me to say right now, but that's... Oh, oh my gosh. So much behind who you've pretended to be. So much behind who you want people to see you as. So much behind how... You, Worried you are about how people feel about you. So much behind your striving to prove someone wrong. And you got to look in the mirror and call it like it is. God, the only reason I'm doing this is because I'm worried about what people think. The only reason I act like this is because I feel like I'm trash. Because look at my error. Look what I did. You got to be able to say that. Because God already knows it. But he can't do nothing for you until you say it. Folks say, oh, you know, they taught us, oh, but don't say that because the devil will hear you. He can't read your thoughts, but he, you want him to hear that. Because when he hears that, he's like, ah, ah, they're letting go of pride. I need pride. I need that pride to do what I'm going to do. You see what I'm saying? That confession destroys him. Because now he can't work through you pretending. Now the affectation, the pretender spirit is cast off. He has no more power. Look in the mirror and admit how you really feel about yourself. Then, only after you admit how you feel about yourself, then cover yourself with God's forgiving grace to be made into the proper image that he created. He's going to do you just like he did Adam and Eve. When they fell in the sin, God rebuked them. And then the Bible said he committed the first sacrifice and got skins and covered them with grace and mercy. Pray, Father God, I come to you humbly asking for forgiveness for pretending to be free from something that I'm bound to. Lord, I carry shame because of who I have become. I carry blame from others. I carry pain from the past. I carry regrets because I blew it. I carry self-pity because I feel what? Unloved and unwanted at times. I feel lonely like I'm alone in these evil times. Even when others are around, I feel they do not really care. God, I'm a mess. And I bring this mess to you right now. Take it and make it what you want it to be. Make my life the way you intended for it to be. Change my thoughts, my patterns, my cycles, all the sources of grief I give to you to men. 
Make me the new creation that I am claiming for real this time. Recreate and set me in the place that you desire me to be in. I fully surrender to you now in Jesus' name. Psalms 55 and 22, cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall what? Sustain me. You can't sustain yourself. Cast it. Let him sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Number four, pray it away. Look at somebody and say, pray till you pray. pray. You got to pray till you pray and pray till you pray it away. Anxiety strikes us all at times. Worry will come. Fear will come. These are normal human emotions, and they must be addressed spiritually and naturally. Addressing them spiritually is praying and sometimes fasting. You have to be willing to let go of your personal dreams and visions in order to remove anxiety. Uh-oh. You have to be willing to let go of your personal dreams and visions in order to remove anxiety. Mm-hmm. I mean, but I feel like this is God. Let it, be willing to let it go. But this is what I, God, God was raised up for this in this. Be willing to let it go. I don't care how precious it is to you. I don't care how much it means to you. You got to be willing to let it go. You have to have that desire if God says let it go to let it go. That means that your attachment isn't to what that is. It's to God. And if he deemed it for you, you'll have it. But if he says, let it go, you'll let it go. Because if it's past that point, it's idolatry. It's an idol. And you've lifted it up higher than him. That's why you got anxiety. Because you don't want to let it go. It's that important to you. Oh, but it's eating up all your money. It's messing with your marriage. It's got you single and you can't get married. It's just destroying your life. But it's your dream and vision and you're going to hold on to it no matter what. Uh-uh. That's not the way we come to God. If any man come to me, he must first. What? So you got to be willing to let go of your personal dreams and visions in order to remove anxiety. These must be replaced with God's dreams and visions for you. Most of the time, people have set goals that are not God's plan. It's societal goals. And God didn't plan it. God didn't plan for you to go into debt for a goal. Where there's vision, there's what? Provision. You know, and folks just take my words and twist them and say, oh, so what if I want to be a doctor? I can't go in the dirt. Well, you can't be a doctor because you're too dumb. But a regular person with good brains can get loans and go into debt because they're going to be a good doctor and they can pay for it. They're going to be sitting up halfway through and quitting and then have all them loans. That's where I was. Most of the time people have set goals that are not God's plan. They have visions and dreams that they have chased or that they chase that are not God's will and that require additional steps that people are not aware of because they are so focused on reaching their goals. Y'all hear that? So God is going to give you goals and dreams. I hear, you may get those from God, but there are steps to that. Yeah. So he'll bring people in your life to aid, aid you to getting there. Yeah. You can't get offended when those people try to mold and mend you to get there. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? They have instruction. God gives wisdom to men. You're not going to find that in the Bible. Some of that stuff you're just not going to find in the word because God gave it to a man, yeah. a person to help mold you in that area. To get you to that goal. You think they're trying to cancel the goal out. And they're just trying to help you get there. But they have visions and dreams that they chase. This is when prayer and supplication come into play. You must be able to reach God for answers. Before. Look at somebody say before. Before you go on a quest for your goal. Check it with God. You must make sure it aligns with God's timing. See, it could be a real valid vision, but it's just not time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I need money. I need to raise it. It may not be time. When time comes, you'll have the money. Yeah. 
Amen. It wasn't time for me to wear Jordans. The Jordan testimony. It wasn't time. I didn't know I'd ever wear them, but it wasn't time. You see what I'm saying? So I waited. Because it wasn't time. I wasn't going in debt over no shoes. Credit card. Shoes. You putting shoes on a credit card? You don't need those shoes. You paying interest on shoes? You don't need those shoes. Oh, they, now, now they got it where you can finance them. Dude, you got a shoe note? You got a note on shoes? Coming around each month? <laughs> Man, but, but these the water spoons. What? <laughs> fear of God, dog. You ain't got no fear of God, bruh. You had fear of God, you wouldn't have financed them shoes. <laughs> Tow truck outside. <laughs> I don't have no car. Oh, no, we didn't come for the car, bro. <laughs> Take some shoes off. <laughs> Take them off now. Take them off now. We, we, we brought Willie. He's the shoe extractor. He'll get them off of you if you, <laughs> if you, have, if you don't voluntarily. And he ain't going to unlace them. <laughs> That's so stupid. All right, let me end this message. What time is it? Amen. But you must make sure it aligns with God's timing and plan for you. Or you will suffer a life full of anxiousness and depression when things don't pan out. It's not God. If anxiousness, it's not God. Depression, it's not. God doesn't do that. He's not going to do that. This is your prayer, dear God, I give this to you. I give you my desires. Mm. And you have to mean it. I give you my desires. And I pray that you take them and sort through them and throw away anything that is not from you. No matter how it makes me feel, I do not want to carry anything that is not ordained for me to carry. I do not want to reach any goal. That is not in your plan for me. Reboot my thoughts and desires and make them line up with yours. Whatever you want. You know, when a computer gets stuck, sometimes you just got to reboot it. Nothing's going to work. Mouse won't move. Reboot it. That's your life. Mouse won't move. Some of y'all are just a spinning color wheel. It's time to reboot. Reboot my thoughts and desires and make them line up with yours. Whatever you want of me. Is all I want of me. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Mm. You have to be able to pray this. You got to look in the mirror and pray it and mean it. Whatever you want of me, Lord, is all I want of me. In Jesus' name. Philippians 4 and 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made. Known to God. Number five, stop sinning. Amen. Amen. I don't, don't, don't come telling me you got anxiety and you in sin. You're supposed to. It feel like in the spirit, a spiritual javelin is in my back. I had a woman tell me that a javelin is in my back. Well, then marry him and quit living with him. Yeah, that's a real story. Yeah, like the woman in the well, huh? You didn't know I was going to know that, did you? Oh, it's just something, just, I feel it. It's a spiritual. <laughs> that ain't what you feel. I mean, why you come talk to me about it? You depressed and you in sin. Sleeping with folks. And you ain't married to them. You supposed to be a... a you don't have a javelin in your neck. <laughs> you need a real one in your neck. Make you stop. Stop sinning. 
a major cause of anxiety is sin. Yeah. Amen. You don't need to read a book. And when I need a book. Pastor, what's a good book about anxiety? What's a good book about the future? Stop sinning. When we are saved and believers in Christ and we fall into sin, we mess with the balance in our spiritual walk. We bring light and darkness together. And if we are sinning, darkness is winning. When the light is not shining, then our hope is lost. You see, the light of Christ in us is our hope and keeps us feeling that we are in good standing with the one that controls the future. You really get a problem with the future when you're not living right. Because you know your fate. I know. I, yeah. When this light is dim and dark in our hearts, our hope and security in God is diminished. And we begin to be overwhelmed by anxiety and depression. But when we practice a holy lifestyle, we feel secure in what we believe. And the future is not uncertain to us. And, boy, folk act like they ain't never sinned since they've been saved. If you sinning and you save, it's hard to even come to God like you did before. Can, I, can we just be honest? When you know you've been doing right, you got that boldness. Devil, you a lie. Come out in the name of Jesus. I ain't putting up with you, Satan. But when you in sin, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord. My soul to keep. You ought to rile up those devils. If I should die before I wake. Lord, my soul to thank God just whatever you want just let it happen in Jesus name amen <laughs> y'all try to oh boy you living right devil Ooh, where is it <laughs> I need to end this message right now what is wrong you don't have no power when the devil got you. You don't have none. So quit letting them get you. Amen. When we practice a holy lifestyle, we feel secure. So in order to stop anxiousness, you must stop what? Sinning. Not all anxiety isn't linked to this, but some of it is. And you know if that's what it is with you. Here's your prayer. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for trying to mix bitter and sweet. Forgive me for trying to use you as an occasion to sin with a guarantee that you will forgive. That's not fair. God, I do not want to frustrate your grace or abuse my privilege as a citizen of your kingdom. Wash me clean, Lord, and renew a right spirit in me. Make me over again and remove the sin that was besetting me. I will do my best to live a holy and acceptable lifestyle for you. A life free from the anxiousness that I was causing by trying to keep sin and you in the same body. In Jesus' name. Galatians 5 and 1, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with what? The yoke of bondage. Matthew 11 and 28. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are what? Heavy. Heavy. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is what? Easy. Easy. And my burden is what? light so if his anxiousness is not his burden because his burden is what light everyone stand to your feet whatever it is you are anxious about look at somebody and say whatever it is you're anxious about you obviously cannot control it which is why you have anxiety in the first place let God Amen. Amen. Turn the lights on. Uh, overflow, y'all, come on. Hurry up. Hurry up. We're going to pray this together. Come on in here. Run. You should have known. Come on. <laughs> you know how we do. <laughs> it might be a lot in there today. Is it a lot of men there today? 
How many? 50? Yeah, they'll fit. Come on. Come on, 50 folks. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll let God make room in here when he's ready to make room. Amen. We're going to see who going to. If, amen. I'm not taken back by crowds. Amen. Amen. Come on, PJ. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, right here. Y'all feel this area all down that aisle right there. Come on. We're going to pray together as a church family. Believe in God. Speaking against this anxiety, speaking against depression, speaking against worry. I know we're at the end times, and I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know every, oh, especially if you're watching the news and TV and listening to folks. Oh, it can be daunting. It can just be heavy. Y'all, come on, run, run, run. It can be heavy. It can be tough. But be encouraged. God is with you. God is with us. He did not bring us this far to leave us. The rest stand in there? Okay. Okay. So we're going to just believe God in here. I want everybody together. So we're going to believe God that we are free from this um, um, anxiety. So no anxiety. We're going to pray An anxiety, freeness, right now so everyone just close your lift your hands up to them and close your eyes and just focus on that feeling that you get that you had that you might even have right now and we're gonna believe god's power to take that away in the name of jesus you are armed with all the prayers you need you're armed with the words you need you're armed with everything god has armed you today that's what this is that's why this church is crowded that's why people are watching it. This, that's what this is. You're armed. God is arming you right now with what you need to deal with these end time feelings of depression, worry, and anxiety. So with your hands lifted up, Father God, we come before you right now as your children. We're your people, God. We love you. We're your saints. We're your last hour saints. We're the ones, Father God, that you selected to go through this time in the earth. Father God, we are your divine appointment to be here in 2021, to be adamant believers, to be here. We're the few, Father God, that are holding on to the faith that, be, that we began with. We're holding on to it in this hour. We're not letting go. So, Father, I pray that that commitment from these people, Father God, that it will be a shining light, a beacon of light in this hour. That commitment. And that you will keep their hearts free from heaviness. I speak against heaviness right now in the name of Jesus. I speak against all anxiety. Every demon spirit of doubt and worry. I speak against it. I don't care what the source is. God, the source will get cleaned up. We'll deal with the source. But right now, I speak it out of your lives. Right now, everyone under the sound of my voice with the authority God has given me. Freedom from anxiety. Freedom from worry. Freedom from depression. Freedom from being afraid. Freedom from fear. All of it becomes unearthed and removed right now you will finish the course you will finish the race you will live a life that's pleasing unto God you will commit and do what he's called you to do the devil will not hinder it I speak it right now the devil can't stop it I speak it right now devil you can't say it to him you can't bring up the past you can't try to tear them down father in the name of Jesus I speak your authority in this place that we would be healed delivered and set free from all anxiousness from all uneasiness from all worry from all doubt from all fear from all apprehension and we will walk in the newness of your light in the name that is above every name you've ordained us for this hour you chose us for this time. You brought us here together for this moment in a place, Father God, during a time where many are afraid to even gather in your name. We are here by faith, believing and trusting 
your power and your authority. I pray, Father God, that this message and this anointed period would rest on everyone in here, even as they leave this place, when we dismiss, when we go into our homes. They will take it in their homes. Father God, that the men or the women of the house, whoever it is that's in charge of the home, will begin to speak it. Even as they walk through the doorways, speak against all reminders of, of their past and their history. All negative influences, all negative voices begin to speak it in their homes to cast them out. Father, anything that they need to get rid of, anything that doesn't need to be in there, I pray that you will show it, illuminate it, put a light behind it. Let them see it so it won't go unnoticed. So they'll make the changes necessary to be relieved from this anxiousness. And I pray, Father God, that husbands and wives will be on the same page about this in every marriage. I pray even for the singles, Father God, during this time. I pray and I speak, Father God, even right now, marriages. I speak that marriages will come. I speak that singles will be wed. I speak against the enemy even causing barriers and obstacles, especially past mistakes and errors to hinder that process father god we belong to you and in this hour we will be true to you in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray amen amen come on hug somebody and say i'm free from all anxiety no more anxiousness hug them come on amen a godly hug Amen. Hallelujah. You may y'all can go back. Amen. I wish we had seats for you. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm free from all anxiety. Say, my home is free from all nuisances. We're not dealing with this anymore. Be free. And whom the Son is set free. What happens? You what? Free indeed. Hallelujah. Come on, give God another praise.